Hi Taurus, welcome to your February 2018 single and ready to mingle love reading. It's Raina here. I've decided to just call it February, even though in, in some of the ones that I've put out already, I said just 2018 because um, it may have a hard time being promoted on YouTube. So um, I am not sure if I'm going to make this a monthly feature. I may just do it once in a while because I already have uh, an established uh, series of love readings. But um, I thought it was a good time to do another singles love reading. So that's why I'm doing it. And I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot, by the way. And I created my own spread, so I'll tell you what it means when I get there. I, have such, I get such a kick out of that card that's supposed to be like the Nine of Swords. I'll show it to you up close in a bit. Okay, so the first thing that I notice is that there's a lot of swords. Okay, swords are air signs. Air signs are Gemini, and Aquarius for Taurus can sometimes occur because you're both fixed signs, and Libra is the other one. Okay, so just think about that. Um, if there's somebody that you like who is one of those signs, they may, it may not be their sun sign, however. But the other thing about swords is that it's about thoughts. And actually, swords is connected to conflict as well. And when you put the two things, conflicting thoughts, that certainly can be what is occurring for some people because the way I'm approaching these single readings, Taurus, is I'm not just saying, okay, this is the, you know, this is what's going to happen. I really want to engage you to think about your side of things, of how, you know, some people, when they talk about their love life, they really make themselves out to be victims. Oh, God, I can't find anyone. And they never tell their friends and maybe family that they sometimes may maybe they're not that nice to potential partners or maybe they are attracted to people that they know are not good for them and then they despise these people's weaknesses it's it's the funniest thing um usually they will paint themselves as the victim and they just can't catch a break they can't find the person for them and I really want you to look at it from your end of things. What can you do? Is there something that you need to change about yourself to possibly have this become more likely in your life? So the central, okay, this is the central challenge to you right now. The Nine of Swords. And as you can see, there's eyeballs, there's worms. It's like this icky, yucky feeling, okay? The Nine of Swords is actually associated with um, anxiety in the traditional depiction of what it means. So maybe that's where they were going with this particular thing. It certainly is gross. But the thing is, well, let's talk about this anxiety, do you have anxiety, Taurus, about will you ever meet the right person? It's very possible you're ruled by Venus, so you may feel like you have to have a partner. It's, it's uh, non-negotiable. But I would say the more anxious that you feel, the more you should refrain from being in a relationship because that means that you are putting too much emphasis on it to save you from yourself, to 
um, make you happy, to make you feel like you're okay. And another person cannot do that for you. I believe that other people can help us heal for sure. That their love, their acceptance can help us to heal. But it, even in those particular cases, it's still an inside job. If you feel like you have had a lot of trauma in your life or a lot of rejection or anything along those lines, you're going to, you know, approach a relationship as like a life raft. And that will probably not end well. With Taurus, what is the number one fault in relationships usually? Possessiveness. Thinking of the other person as your possession, jealousy, trying to hold on to what is yours. Well, another person is not your possession. The only reason that people do that is because they don't feel like they um, are their own people. They, they, the idea of somebody like cheating on them or leaving them is just beyond the pale. It's beyond even words. That has to change. You have to be confident in yourself at all times. And that's an inside job. So let's look at your history to see where this may come from. This is the Hierophant. Now for some of you the anxiety may be coming from religious teachings because this card is connected to that. And so it could be that you feel like it's your it's your um, that you're supposed to be married by now. Maybe you're 30 years old. Maybe you're going through your first Saturn return, or maybe you're in your early 30s. If you're a woman, there's that added pressure of, I want a child, and my biological clock is ticking. So these things are real issues. I get it. The Hierophant can also be about conformity. And I think that goes along with what I'm just saying. So you're a certain age, 30 or, uh, you know, Usually, people are getting married around that time, around the age of 30. And they are like lemmings. If they see their friends doing it, then they think they have to do it. If you're older, you may be comparing yourself to other people who are your age and thinking, wow, you know, they already have children. Maybe you're 40 years old and you're, you're thinking about that about getting married, you know, because you haven't done so already. Or, you know, when I say getting married, it could be getting involved in a serious relationship, but doing so for reasons other than true love. And the Hierophant can be about conforming to societal expectations, religious expectations, or just because, you know, just peer pressure and things like that. But there's not that, or tradition maybe, you know. Uh, which is kind of like cultural things. How do you heal from this? Interesting. I think I touched upon this. This is the Three of Swords. And this is a card that is associated with rejection of love. Sometimes like a um, three parties involved. And so it is, I, I had mentioned that maybe some of you are coming from past relationships where you felt like, you know, the person did cheat. And so that is giving you that sense of anxiety because it, when somebody cheats, it, may, it, it tends to lower the self-esteem of the person who's being cheated on. They tend to feel not good enough. And that's an unfortunate uh, thing to take away from that that experience, but it's understandable. However, that's your first mistake. If you have been in that situation and it has affected you emotionally, I want you to think about it this way. Think, you know, it doesn't necessarily say anything about me. What it does say is that this person, maybe they feel insecure and they're looking to boost up their self-esteem by, you know, getting with somebody else and trying to prove that they're desirable by as many people as possible, you know, because that is definitely a big thing. Now, the Three of Swords could also be that you felt rejected. Maybe you felt rejected um, when you were a child. But the healing comes by acknowledging it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Not by 
wallowing in the past, but by acknowledging that this is part of what is driving you and what may be creating a sense of anxiety within you that gives you that sense of urgency that you have to be in a relationship and that is just not true. Right about now you might be saying, okay, now how is, <laughs> how is all of this going to get me what I want? Well, this is what I'm trying to say is that it's not that easy um, to just snap your fingers and have a relationship. Even if you find somebody who seems like they're very interested in you, if you have things to heal, Taurus, you will tend to push that person away one way or the other uh, with your behavior. It may contradict what's coming out of your mouth, but that would not be uncommon because people who have unresolved emotional issues tend to act in ways that are a little bit um, contradictory. So don't underestimate the power of healing in helping you to attract love into your life. Okay, so these are two cards that are connected to the who, what, when uh, of, um, you know, where do you meet this person? Who will they be? Ace of Wands. This is a very hopeful card. It may be in the springtime, during the time of um, Aries, that you meet this person. So we're talking about the March period. Um, that's one thing that I could say. Maybe it's the, maybe the person will be in Aries. Um, Aries is a sign right behind you, and sometimes people fall in love with the adjacent signs. The other card that I got here is the Eight of Wands. So this is another, you see that kind of, I think that's supposed to be like a lightning bolt. This can indicate that you are um, going to, you know, it could be like there's a period where things are just kind of like quiet. And then all of a sudden, like a bolt of lightning, you start, um, talking to someone. Maybe you meet somebody in a very unexpected way and all of a sudden the messages are flying back and forth. But these are both one's energies, so I wouldn't be surprised if this person was a fire sign. If not an Aries, then a Leo is, a, is a, always a sure bet because Leo is a fixed sign like you are. And the other fire sign is Sagittarius. And the outcome is the Page of Swords. So this is a card of someone, it's funny that they use an owl, that's kind of perfect, because Page of Swords is having an awareness about you. And that's what I like to see, because unlike the Three of Swords, which is this feeling of being rejected by someone, um, the Page of Swords is about being aware of the per person that you're meeting, being more conscious. And you could, you know, in other decks, they sometimes show someone who looks like a spy, who's very acutely on alert of what is going on and is really like ferreting out information. So it makes me think that you are meeting someone, you're feeling a sense of passion with them, but you're also not getting carried away. You're just kind of observing and seeing how they act. And I think I always say that's a really good idea rather than jumping into something. It's just seeing that person, um, don't listen to what they say, listen to what they do. And, and at first, you may not get the real person. People tend, especially people who are sociopaths, they tend to be very good at putting on a, um, an act at the beginning, but eventually people give themselves away. They have a moment of lack of awareness where they reveal who they really are. And in the best case scenario, it's just that a person's having an off day and they may, um, you know, lose their temper, for instance, but it's not the end of the world. It's not 
they're not a bad person because they lose their temper. But then you have some people where they are really disturbed individuals, that they get violent or they, you know what I mean? So when they lose their temper, it becomes something much worse. And they have this facade only for so long until something triggers it and they just lose it. So by the more that you can stay kind of observant, you don't get sucked into a relationship prematurely that could end you know, badly or complicate your life. So I hope that you enjoyed this Taurus. It looks really good for you. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome February. Bye.